I wrote Kindness. I actually was the secretary for Kindness. After my husband and I were robbed of everything on our honeymoon, long, long ago. And it was a, a rather desperate situation. Someone on the same bus with us was murdered. So we didn't get the worst brunt of the evening. But, um, but it was rough. And what to do next? This was in the pre-cell phone day and pre-internet day. And uh, we didn't want to call home. Uh, because we were in South America on our honeymoon, and everybody had told us we were crazy to attempt to do what we were going to try to do, which was foiled after a week because we had nothing. So we were going to try to go from the top of South America to the bottom by bus. <laughs> and a man came up to us and was very kind. And afterwards, I sat, just spoke to us, and was kind. And so afterwards, I was trembling. I was very, very anxious. Um, and I just sat. The only thing I had left was a little tiny notebook and a pencil that had been in my back pocket. And I sat in a public plaza in Popayan. And this poem was spoken out of the air to me. And I just copied it down. Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness, how you ride and ride thinking the bus will never stop, the passengers eating maize will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. He too was someone who journeyed through that night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. For me, um, being a person at that point who really trusted the act of writing things down, that if you wrote things down, you could kind of grow into them later sometimes. You could kind of come to believe them later. Or sometimes something would come out of your pen and pencil and you weren't even sure you understood it. Um, as a comparative religions major in college, I knew that when I was writing these high-blown papers, um, often I would say something and I'd think, wow, I wonder if, I hope that's true. And <laughs> need to go back later. Do I need to consult 17 more scholars or could I really say that? Um, uh, but you know, as a writer, that you can go back and find that pieces that came out of your own pen or pencil could mysteriously continue to guide you um, for years to come. And on the spot, after I finished writing down what that, it was a woman's voice speaking out of the air. Um, after I finished writing it down, I knew three things that I could do right then on the spot. And um, my, next, my next moves in a town where you have no friends, no money, no passport, nothing. What do you do? So it was amazing that simply focusing and calming down to write a few words that didn't even come from me at all, more importantly, they came from somewhere else that uh, they could guide you.